We've got the Cowboys versus the Panthers, Queensland uh, at Queensland Country Bank Stadium, 8 p.m. Friday. Uh, I will say, I just want to note to the the listeners, the heartbreak of no Thursday game seriously hurts me heart, honestly. Yeah. Um, ruins me week. Anyway, on? Cowboys versus Panthers. I guess we'll have to wait till Friday. <laughs> uh, Cotter, Robson, Nanai, Holmes, Toilungi, uh, all out due to origin. Zach Laybutt starts at centres. Granville at hooker. Kyle Felt returns to the ring. Granville at hooker. He's back, finally. He's, he's been, back. Mate, he's played everywhere and then finally got, he's come home. He's come home. He's been playing prop. Mate, everywhere. He was at fullback at one stage. <laughs> centres, um, all of it. Oh, mate. Uh, Jason Damalolo returns from a knee injury. Uh, and a mid-season mid signing, Sam McIntyre is the new man on the bench. For the Panthers, Luai, Crichton, Martin, Yo, Toa are all out due to origin. Salmon comes into the halves. Peachy starts at centre. Jenkins on the wing. Eisenhuth starts at lock. Garner returns on the bench. How do you see this playing out, Smithers? Well, the Penny Panthers, they're, they're favourites, um, even though they're on the road um, up to Townsville, which is... Um it's going to be pretty warm up there still. It's, it's like 25, 26 degrees still um, in the evenings. Uh, but um, big, big returning name, of course, for the Cowboys, Jason Tamalolo. He's been out. It seems like he's been out for ages mm, with know. that knee injury. Yeah. Um, he's sort of, oh, I don't know, maybe six, seven weeks, it seems like. Um, so they've taken their time to bring him back. He must be tip-top now, ready to go. Um, how do they, I guess the big thing for the Cowboys is how do they handle, um, you know, all of these changes they've got, you know, what have they got? Two, four, five, you know, five, five players out, um, and some pretty crucial players at that, particularly Reese Robson. I think they haven't played a lot of football without him in that nine position, um, over the last sort of, um, season and a half. So, um, the question is how do they handle these mass changes, um, and even though they're playing at home in front of their home crowd, there should be a big crowd there being a Friday night um, against the, the, the reigning premiers in the Panthers. That is the question. How do, they, how do they play without those missing stars? Whereas the Panthers, we know that they, they perform with changes. Oh. It's, just, it's just the next player slots into the position, they go into the machine, and they just go out and roll out and, and play the way they do. They've done that over the last couple of weeks. They've been really good. Um, you know, Nathan Cleary not being there, their main, their sort of chief playmaker, the guy that organises everything. It's it's what their their team and their their game is is centred around Nathan Cleary. But they've just they've just gone that next bloke in, go do the job, play exact same way, and they just continue to to win games. So Mate. I'm 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 leaning towards Penrith Panthers because I I think they they they. Um, they deal and, and, and they adjust to these changes a lot better than most teams. Mate, it is it is such a pleasure to watch this Penrith Panthers outfit. I mean, they are exciting. They do all the tough stuff right. I do think that the fact that Tamal Damalolo back is a huge in, for sure. And he hasn't played since April 15th, so it's quite a while ago. Yeah. But I do think that be, keeping their front row rotation of Leota, Fisher-Harris, and also Edwards... Is a huge like they're a huge part of the Penrith Panthers kind of system, and I know Isaiah Yo, Luai, Cleary out, like for sure they're you know they're the spine. But when you've got Edwards, Leota, Fisher, Harris, in regards to meterage, you're gonna you're gonna get that. The mm. players that you get you bring in for the Penrith Panthers, you don't need them to be superstars in attack, and no. sh and surely their defence isn't that much worse than the players that I'm that they're replacing. So basically. Yeah. The Panthers' MO, and I think the Storm for a while there as well, was defend your way to victory. And I think that they're going to go into this game and probably do the same, just to just wait for the Cowboys to make errors, you know, get impatient, um, because they were absolutely – they did not – I never thought that I would look at a Panther side, watch them play. Hmm. I didn't even think of Nathan Cleary while I was watching it. I yeah. didn't even notice he wasn't there. And that's not to say Cleary isn't an incredible player, but this is how good their system is. Yeah. And it's just, as I, as I mentioned, like it, it doesn't matter what name is playing in that jersey, it, they just go out and play that, that same style that, that they've found that works. Mm. It doesn't matter who they play, it doesn't matter where they play, and who's, as you know, going back to that point we just spoke about, and who's playing in that jersey, they go out and play their role, and they, and they play the role that's in their system, and if they each, each individual plays that role the best they can, they, they are very, very hard to beat. Now, you look... They, 
the Cowboys are coming off the bye, so they'll, they'll be fresh. Mm. Okay, they'll, they'll be fresh. They'll be feeling good. They're playing at home. And particularly coming off that big win, their last game they played was the big win against uh, the Storm. They put, mm. you know, 45 points or 46, whatever it was, against Melbourne. They played outstanding. But the guys that were, you know, so important in that victory are the guys now involved in origin. So, yeah. home, like, Val Holmes was huge. Talungi scored a couple. Um, Nanai, on his return from suspension, was, was very good. And Reese Robson... He had an enormous game. Um, Ruben Cotter, just usual Ruben Cotter, doing his thing, making you know forty odd tackles and, and plenty of carries. So that's what I'm talking about with the Cowboys. How do they deal with the changes in personnel, and can they can they match what the Penrith Panthers are going to bring to this game? Yeah, in, in the Cowboys situation, they're obviously missing some, like key players, and they're not in the same. Uh, they don't have the luxury of a system that's like set in yeah. stone to fall back on like the Panthers do. I will say though, Jason Tamalolo, if you needed a, you know, a shock to get you back to life, yeah. he's the guy to do it. And I know they had a big win before the bye, but if they can use that momentum, come back, Jason Tamalolo lifts them up, all of a sudden with such a tight competition, they, they could be rolling into the, the business end of the season with a few wins under their belt and fighting for the top eight. And so I, I do think that and it's to the Cowboys' credit, they haven't excused themselves over the past six weeks or so by saying Tamalolo is out. You haven't heard a peep in regards to, well, we're missing Jason Tamalolo. So to their credit, and I, so because it's been so quiet around that, I think we've, or me personally anyway, I've almost forgotten that Tamalolo has been out injured and how yes. incredibly important he is to the Cowboys. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree, mate. He, he's like their... He, well, number one, he's their enforcer, okay? So he carries the ball strong. Every time he takes the field, the opposition are very wary of, of his presence and, and when he's getting the football and whatnot. But I think he he's a guy that helps um, other players around him grow in confidence, mm. if, you, if you know what I'm yeah. saying. like So when he when he takes the field, everyone looks across and Big Jace is there. They're like, wow, like I, I feel more confident in myself. I feel more confident in, in the team that we're going to do good things today. I um, When you sit down, if I'm, if I'm the coach, I sit down and go, okay, we still got our starting six and seven. We still got our starting uh, fullback in Scotty Drinkwater. Uh, Zach yep. Labart, he he's a, a great young talent coming through. Kyle Felt, experienced winger. We know how good he can play when he's on. Peter Hickey again, same situation. And then I go to the forwards and I go, okay, Jake Granville, yeah, he's a bit older, but he's won a premiership. Jordan McLean in origin contention last year. Look at their back row, Leilua, Luki, and I go, on paper right now, this, this is what I'd be saying if I'm Toddy Payton, on paper, we are as good as the side that we're facing up against. You know, mm. um, it is not a matter of, you know, the Panthers are that, you know, just so much better at talent wise. Uh, and so I, and also you've got to, you know, factor in the fact that they're playing at home. So I definitely give the Cowboys a chance, but I just think this Penrith, um, their ability to, just wait for you to make a mistake. Just, just yeah. so they like squeeze the life out of you. Yep. They what they do is mate, they are so patient, and that's the part of their game that they've grown since their first premiership a couple of years ago. Mm. Is that they they've become a much more patient footy side. That they will, they're happy to back their defence without scoring too many points. Mm. So they'll they'll just they'll just strangle you and suffocate you out of the game, or, or make you come up with plays that you know that that bring errors and then that's when they pounce they just they just wear you down wear you down wear you down make an error bang thank you we'll we'll take some points out of that yeah yeah for the cows um they need to get the ball to valame yeah how good was just he get, just get it to valame oh wow it's big semi yeah. big semi valame he was what scored a hat trick on on his club debut yeah. for cows yep mate get him the ball uh, I got some text here. Hey boys, heard you talking about the Panthers. Remember the pennies, uh, the Penny Panthers rested all the guys from New South Wales Cup so they would be fresh for travel and step up to the NRL. The insider. Wow, I wasn't aware that they rested all the resi guys. But I mean, again, it's just it's one of those decisions. What that did you... they do that last week, Kempi? Well, it's, I mean, this is what I get. I think the guy is saying is that they rested their New South Wales Cups guys in preparation for this game. Right. Um, which, I, I mean, I love it as a tactical decision because such a congested 
uh, table, points are at yeah. a premium right now. And yeah. if you can get through this period without your main guys, the Penrith yeah. Panthers, mm. you're almost guaranteeing yourself a top four spot. Yeah, well, there you go. Well, that, that's, that's just smart, isn't it? That's planning. Yeah. And thinking about your football and, and thinking about, you know, how, how you're best going to place yourself and, and knowing um, that you're going to have some guys missing from this big trip. And it is a big trip, like going all the way up to Townsville. It's, it's, it's a big travel day, um, slightly different conditions than what you're used to when you're playing down in either in Sydney or even further south like the Melbourne Storm. Warriors as well. When you go to Townsville, it's, it's, it's humid, it's warm. The ball can get a bit bit greasy, even you know playing at night mm. um, at that later time at eight pm. But um, that's just that's just good planning by by a team that are on top of their game. I will say yes, it's such a good point. You could not imagine how slippery that ball gets sometimes in that humidity. Like you see players <laughs> dropping balls, and you're going, "Hang on a sec, it's twenty eight degrees." It's a beautiful <laughs> night. It is honestly like soap sometimes. I, I, I yeah. kid you not. It is incredible yeah. how slippery it gets. Um, yeah. But, mate, we're going to head to a break. After the break, we're going to go Knights v. Roosters. Tommy, he's got a box of tissues. He's nearly ready to cry. He's nearly oh. ready to break down in tears. He's been honestly oh. on the edge of the whole episode. Uh, we're going to get to Knights okay. v. Roosters. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Make sure to give us a follow on uh, SEN League on Instagram. And also you can follow us on TikTok. Plus, Bloke Beer, now available in uh, most, uh, well, not, if not most, all celebrations in New South Wales, Queensland, ACT. Also, it's in every liquor legends in Queensland. The beer of rugby league. I tell you what, no beer loves rugby league the way Bloke Beer does. I, I can guarantee it. I would, you know what? I challenge anyone to a wrestle that any other owner of a beer company <laughs> that would disagree with that. Um, maybe an oiled up, not, a, a wrestle all oiled up. We can film it for content. <laughs> Uh, maybe Mate, a pay where's going, Kempi? I don't know. I don't know, Smithy. <laughs> Sometimes I just get a bit strange. I apologise. Uh, Knights v. The Roosters, Saturday, 3 p.m. at McDonald's Stadium, <laughs> Jones Stadium. Uh, Knights team news. Frizzell out for origin, replaced by Fitzgibbon. Uh, Tuala replaces Greg Marjo on the wing, who's been dropped for failing to meet team standards as he missed the team bus mm. the day after the loss to Brisbane. A few skooey, skooey moyoys maybe after the game. Mm. Um, Roosters team news. Uh, Tedesco and Collins out due to origin. Luke Keary moves to 5'8". Sandon Smith, that's right, not Brandon. San it's his evil brother, Sandon. No, I joke. Uh, Sandon Smith starts at halfback. <laughs> I've lost my mind, Smith. I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> He's going mad. <laughs> uh, Joey Manu starts at fullback. Nat Butcher moves to prop. Uh, White starts at lock. Lodge has been dropped. And Terrell May comes onto the bench. How do you see this playing out, Smithers? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking Newcastle. Kempe. Wow. Yeah. Yep. I'm thinking Newcastle. I'm just uh, like, particularly, okay, you take Tedesco and Collins um, out of this footy side. Um, you know, Teddy for the Roosters has been great, you know, for them over the last couple of weeks. He's been, you know, he, he's had some inspirational type performances as skipper. Um, a, a bit of shuffling around as well for the Roosters. Joey Mano going back to the number one position. Um, Natty Butcher going prop. Uh, look, I don't know. They just they there's something not happening at the Roosters at the moment. Um, sorry, not at the moment. This year, it's just I don't know. It's just something's not clicking. They just they they look a shadow of them of themselves. Mm. With with so many elite players in that football side, you, like we're just not seeing the output by them as a team. Mm. Now individuals are finishing the game with some, you know, some impressive numbers. So if you go off stats alone, like you're like, wow, like they great game, great game, great game. But it's just not happening for them as a footy side. And at times it's 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 both parts of the game that that are concerning. Like a lot's been said about their attack, but their defence too. Like they're conceding big points mm. when they're losing these matches. They're conceding big points. Whereas you look at the Knights. Well, you know, I know they went down to the Broncos. But it took a, a pretty special effort from the Broncos late to get that victory. Um, they went down by four points. If you, if you look at their last month, okay, so to take one of the the sort of league leaders in the Broncos, you know, all the way to the death at, at home, um, they beat Manly in their previous game to that. Okay, heavy loss to the Sharkies, but um, they had a big win prior to that as well 
um, against the Gold Coast Titans. So they're a team that, that are playing well. And, and I must say, with the change to Kalen Ponga um, at the back, I, th- I think it's made a world of difference, not only to, to KP's individual performances, but the way this footy side is now playing. And I think playing at home, that gives them you know, a, a, an even greater advantage. I actually think the Knights win this one, Kempi. Yeah, look, I, I, uh, yes, it's been an inconsistent year for the Knights, for sure, for sure. I, I'm, and it's been up and down. But what I have really liked about the Knights is the fight that they've shown. You know, they've had so much injuries and things go mm-hmm. against them. And just when you think that they're out, when you go, okay, here we go, Knights are, you know, in for a shocker. They pull off a performance like they did up in Brisbane against the Broncos. And yeah. and I, I just, I love that in a side. And I think that that's something that, you know, Adam O'Brien can be proud of that. Yes, okay, maybe technically they're not at the level of the top eight right now. But the ticker and the will to win and will to play for each other, it comes out when they need it to come out. And, and I think that that is something that the Knights fans should be quite proud of this year. I just think that at the moment the Knights are struggling or paying the price for not the best roster management, in my opinion. I think that they haven't – yes, they've struggled with injury, but I do think that the decision to move Ponga to six and yep. then you know bring in uh, Miller – and now Miller's not in the side and they trade in for a younger fella. I just think that the roster management is – People really underestimate how much one year of bad roster management can throw you off. For example, if Ponga had a Ponga had a stayed fullback and they had kept him there, they could have made a bigger play at um, Brooks. They could have made a bigger play maybe at Moses. Like all these all these things that they may have missed out on in their halves, they're now you know. And this is no disrespect to Tyson Gamble, but now they've got Hastings and Tyson Gamble, and I Gamble's a battler. I love the passion he brings, but he's probably not at the standard of a top eight six right now. Um, and so I think the Knights are kind of paying the price for that in regards to roster management. Um, but the good thing is, is the ticker they're showing. Um, what are your yep. thoughts on Greg Marju? One of their best this year, incredible coming out of his own end, like really incredible. What are your thoughts on him getting dropped for missing the bus? Well, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it, you know, it, Got to understand the situation, I guess, and and there are standards that are in place with with our, with footy clubs um, throughout the competition, and and some set higher bars than others can be. Mm. Um, I guess you know we don't know exactly what's gone on. Maybe prior to that, he, he might have had a warning for other other issues that have gone on previously, and this was just the 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 action or um, you know the thing that that broke the camel's back this time. So. Mm. Um, I, I I don't mind it because I think it's important to have standards. I think it's important to uphold those standards as well because when you start to slacken off and 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 forget about those standards off the field, they those bad habits start to creep in on the field as well. Yeah. So I I think it's really important that you you do maintain high standards both on and off the field. Um, you know you gotta you gotta. It's it's not all about the individual. It's it's about the team. Mm. And you know, there's there's strict rules in place to for for reasons um, about those performances. And you know, if you, you can't just you can't just walk around and do everything that pleases you. You know, it, it's a team first thing. Mm. Um, that's that's what sports about. That's what team sports are about. And you know, you look at other um, organisations and industries out there. It's it's all about the team and. If you want to do your own thing, then that's when you know the the, the team starts to suffer. So I, I actually don't mind that um, that you know they're upholding those high standards and and that he's being left out because of that. Um, I'd like to get your views though on on the Roosters and where you feel they're at this year. And we may need to bring our man Tommy in too because he he as a staunch staunch Rooster supporter. He may have, he may be able to give us some insight into you know what the Roosters fans are feeling at the moment. Tommy, what are your thoughts on the Roosters, mate? Afternoon, guys. Thanks for bringing me in. Um, yeah, very, very disappointing. I was at that game on Saturday night, um, Panthers game, and, yeah, very depressing. I, I was speaking to you guys in the break. It just doesn't seem that there, there's no confidence in what any anything that the Roosters are doing right now. If, if it's in their attack, if it's in their defence. And Trent Robinson, since before this year, kind of like the bedrock of his, 
I know team philosophy has been, you know, defense and off the back of that, your attack will come. But it just seems like there's no confidence whatsoever in the team. I think the the decision to drop Sam Walker, I know it's so long ago, but mm. it had uh, the attack was looking so much better with Sam at seven, Luke at six. Now he's been dropped, picked up an injury in reserve grade, is out for at least another month. I agree. I like that they've moved Joey Manu back to center because it hasn't worked out as a six. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Just not not a lot of confidence from the team, which doesn't put a lot of confidence in Roos's fans. And mm. that top eight, oh, top four is completely out of the picture, in my opinion. But that top eight kind of feeling with it, with each week and each loss, it just gets harder and further and further away. Can they do it though, Tom? Yes, can I they, think can you, can I think given how eight? close the competition is, I think they can still make the top eight. Whether they can actually make an impact in the finals and go because they haven't got, progressed further than week two since 2019. So whether yeah. or not they can do that, that's a whole other story. We are we're going to head to a break. Before we get to the break, though, Beak, does this mean you'll wrestle Chad Townsend, Cronulla Beer, and Morris Boys, Catamon Beer? Uh, obviously, it was a joke in regards to the, the wrestling, <laughs> but I tell you what, maybe Mate. a few few beers behind closed doors. Um, You're in trouble, Kempi. Hey, uh, look, I'm, I need. To, I might actually need to leave the show and begin training right now. It's been a few years. No, I. Um, the Morris Boys, the Catamans beer. I don't think they'd say they're a rugby league beer, and Cronulla beer is obviously more of a craft beer. So, um, <laughs> my neck and being dominated in a wrestle is still safe at this stage. Uh, no, all jokes aside, uh, if you if you want to try a beer though, Catamans beer. Um, and the Cronulla beer, they are, they're great beers. So go to their websites and their Instagram. Give them a follow, guys, because I love seeing the boys uh, get into the beer industry because, hey, no one knows beer better than rugby league players. We'll see you after the, other so- after the breaks about things and ads. <laughs> <laughs> what is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the captain's run. Let's get into Eels versus Seagulls. Moses and Paolo out due to origin. Arcee starts at halfback. Madison starts at 5'8". Ogden starts at prop. Often Gow joins the bench. DC and Trevojevic are out. That is Tommy Trevojevic. K.O. Weeks starts at fullback. Arthur starts at halfback. What do you think about this match? Well, both teams were impressive, weren't they? Can't be last round. Um, Seagulls, of course, big win against the Dolphins and the Eels winning on the King's birthday against the Doggies. But a couple of players out that were that were highly influential for both footy sides. Of course, Moses um, getting the call up to play in the seven jersey for uh, New South Wales and big junior Bolo. Um, well, he's a mainstay in the Blues team. Um, and then DCE and Tommy Trebojevic. I thought those two were just... That's the best I've seen them play um, their, their their combo all season. Easily. I don't, I don't know if you, you've, seen, you've seen that match. Kempe, yeah, mm-hmm. like Tommy Trebojevic, he just... He looked like he wanted a big game um, right from the early early um, minutes in that in that match, particularly when they had the footy. He just he was sniffing around the middle. He was looking for runs inside um, DCE, um, chasing kicks, all those little things that w- when you look at Tommy and his high involvement, that you just think, mate, he's going to have a big game here. Um, so highly influential those two. Um, I'm thinking I'm I'm leaning eels here, given it's at Combank Stadium, um, in front of their home crowd. I think they may they, they'll roll off that that impressive victory on the weekend. Um, and and I thought you know Big Gutho I thought was was really impressive too. Um, I know Mitch Moses you know had played a hand in um, a, a couple of those those tries that he scored against the doggies, but you know I thought he was back to some of his best football as well. Um, the thing with Manly though is that if you give them opportunities and you give them space, they have they have got big, powerful, fast players mm. that can blow a game wide open. Um, you know, particularly the guys you know on 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 the edges like Cole. Did you see Cole open up? Oh my god! On the weekend when he when he got that ball in space, rapid. It, it just oh fast mate and like and I'm, you know can be mate, you're one of the fastest guys that have played our game like that's proper speed yeah and then you look on the other side like Jason Saab you know if if you give these guys as I said some some space to move and and some opportunity to to you know use their speed they will just it's good night mm. um, you know so they're a, they're a very big footy side manly um, and and play aggressively. 
when when you know when they turn up with the right attitude and and they've got speed as well so two you know significant ingredients that can can put together a pretty damaging game of football just not sure if they can come up with that with their best footy without those two key men in in Cherry Evans and Trebojevic yeah it's the manly the challenge for them is is they come out and have these incredible games and you go wow that is top mm. 4 footy and then, yeah. you know, two, three weeks later, you're going, oh, my God, like, this is not even top eight footy. <laughs> What's uh, happened? To yeah, what, what has happened? And so the challenge they face themselves with is they know the blueprint. The blueprint is hyper-aggression through the middle, which creates spaces for their edges or for Tommy and DCE through the middle, and, and stick to that. But the problem is, is that they're not delivering on that blueprint each week, week in, week out. And I think that's, mm. that's a standard thing that they've, they've got to hold each other accountable you know, each week rather than going, you know, oh, we'll let this slide here, we'll let that slide there. Okay, yeah, we're a bit, you know, low this week. See how we go next week. I, I think there has to be, you know, that they've got to hold each other accountable because yeah. they've got the squad, they've got the game plan. It's just about delivering it week in, week out. Yep. Yeah, absolutely, mate. That's 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 key for them because we've seen when they've been at their best, they can beat they can beat the best sides in the comp. Like the way that they shut the storm out. Um, earlier in the year, I think it was what round th three or four, something like that. Mm. Might have been a little bit later in the thing. Actually, might have been round seven. Around that stage, fairly early on, they just they completely um, bashed the Melbourne Storm out of the game, and they played some high quality football as they did last week. The Dolphins, they were well below their best, but um, you know when they're playing that good football and they're confident and they're upbeat and they're going, you know. When they when they're going really well, like that, they, they can beat pretty much every team in this competition. I really like Lachlan Croker. Oh I'm mate, a big fan of his. Big fan of his. Just the way you know, he's a well, he started his career as a five eight. Mm, yeah, played most of his early football as a five eight. Um, played a bit of half and then got chucked in that number nine role. And he's just he's he's made that number nine jersey his own. Um, I love the way he, he gets in there and you know he plays aggressively. He's only a you know sort of a, a little fella compared to most of the other players on the field, but plays aggressively, does some really, really, really good things for them that go I think unnoticed because of you know I guess you know the high higher profile players that he plays alongside. But um, yeah, he's 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 going to be super important in this game um, coming up against the Eels. I just think that they they get it done at home, coming off uh, a really strong win. Yeah, you know, they're a confident style of footy team, um, Parramatta. When they get on a bit of a roll, um, you know they can they can put a few wins together. Um, I think it might be their night this week. Now let's preview our game of the round. Thanks to SunCorp, building a more resilient Queensland. That's the SunCorp spirit. Tigers v Storm. Well, the ins and outs uh, we won't go through because we're short on time. How do you see this playing out? Tigers v Storm. Well, they've got, well, just quickly, like Coruscant is obviously out, Brooks, um, Atoyi Kamanu all out. I think that's bad news for the um, for the Tigers. Big names also with, with Melbourne, but, yeah, it was a massive performance against the Sharkies. Um, I think they'll be challenged again by Craig Bellamy to say, hey, we need to back that performance up. That's been... Uh, uh, it's what's been plaguing our season this year and what we haven't been able to do is put together, you know, consistent performances week in, week out. So we need to travel up to Sydney. We need to go up there and play the way we did, the style of footy that we played, expansive, back ourselves, um, you know, get up there and, and play well. I think it's going to be a Melbourne Storm victory, this one. Yeah, look, it's the Storm, you know, one week lost substantially to Cowboys. They come back. They have a really good performance uh, on the weekend. It's, as you said, it's about building on that now. It can't be, uh, you know, every few weeks we rock up and we remind everyone that we're the Melbourne Storm. It has to be week in, week out. And the Mel like, you've still got Hughes. You've still got Meany. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You've still got your back line. You, you're not as decimated as a yesteryear in, in regards to losing players. Yeah. Um, and so there is a core of a, a team there. Like Hughes, for example, I thought he was really good on the weekend. But like this might give him an opportunity just to open his wings a little bit more this year. You know, Munster mm. is such a, a dominant player that yeah. um, Hughes might have an opportunity to really make the team his own over this next period. And 
you have to say with the Melbourne Storm, because anything less than top four every year is the goal, they need to pick these wins up yeah. in, during Origin. They can't afford to lose really many matches, and this is an opportunity yeah. to do it against the Tigers side that without Appy, without Brooks, without Stefano, um, yeah. going to see it very tough for them to, to get the job done. It, it, it's going to be a tough one for the Tigers, but the one the, the mindset that they need to have is is like think back over the last month they haven't been all that bad, Kempi. Yeah, the Tigers. I actually feel as though they've been playing some quality football over the last month, mm. although it hasn't been all victories um, through that four or five weeks. I feel as though they've been playing some good enough football to challenge some of these top teams, and the way they need to do that is through their defence. That, that was the most impressive part of their last month of football is the way that they've, um, you know, their attitude towards their defence and, and, you know, they were, they were, they were aggressive. Um, they were working hard for each other. The other night, though, that was, that was one area where it's, it's almost like they forgot that part of the game. Hmm. And the, the Titans just sort of, they ran right a little bit, particularly on their edges, like they were dropping off tackles, hmm. left, right and centre. It's like they didn't really want to get their heads in there and, and, and sort of get involved in any of the physical stuff. If they bring that attitude, that defensive mindset, and they're committed to their defense, committed to their tackles, and, and they're making their tackles, particularly out on the edge when the Storm want to shift the football and go wide and try to move them around a bit, I, I, I give them a chance. Mm. I actually give them a chance. If they don't, though, the Storm could put a bit of a score on them. That's a game around. Thanks to Suncorp. Make sure you're Queensland covered. Search Suncorp Insurance for a quote today. That's the Suncorp spirit. After the break, we continue our preview for round 16. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Sharkies versus Doggies. Sunday, 4 p.m. Points Bet Stadium. Sharks team use Brendan Hamlin Uellet. Starts at prop. Royce Hunt out while Thomas Hazelton joins the bench. The Doggies, Braden Burns, comes onto the wing for Ado Car while Chris Patola is named to start at prop. What do you reckon, Smithers? Uh, I think this might be a bit of a bounce back for the Sharkies. I think, um, unfortunately, for the Doggies, um, off that big loss to the Storm, they might be on the the end of a bounce back performance, particularly for their main man, Nico Hines. Um, of course, we all know now that he's been left out of game two for the New South Wales Blues um, and possibly you know, the performance against the, against the Melbourne Storm may have contributed to that. So I reckon... This might be a bounce back game for the Sharkies and playing at home Sunday. They don't mind playing their Sunday Arvos at home, big crowd. Um, and they just need to find the football that we know that the Sharks can play. Like last week, they, oh, let's be honest, they, they, were, they weren't great. Mm. And if I'm using a word from Craig Bellamy about the Storm the week before, they were putrid, Kempi. Putrid. Putrid. Wow. And if you look at, and if you look at, and, and you know, we, we we talk about stats and sometimes they don't tell the story, but they had they they only completed at sixty three percent against Melbourne. Um, their missed tackles. How many missed tackles do you reckon they had? I know the answer. Well, but... you know the answer because you do you break down all these games. <laughs> but fifty seven. Fifty. Was that, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Yeah, fifty seven missed tackles. So again, you know, like. We, we look at football and we can talk about football and a lot of the things that make the highlights and, and the headlines and all that is about attack and cut out passes and line breaks and all these fancy things. But if you don't turn up with the right attitude to tackle the opposition, then you may as well not turn up at all. Mm. You may as well not turn up at all. So I reckon, uh, particularly with their coach, Craig Fitzgibbon, he was, you know, I think he's a, he's a type of coach that he... You know, builds his game around defence. That's where it all starts, and and you, the rest of your game comes from that. I reckon the Sharkies. I reckon they might have done a little bit of tackle practice this week. Oh yeah, and we'll see a very very different performance by them um, on the weekend. As I said, you know, it's unfortunate for the Bulldogs that they get this this uh, coming up against a team that that cops such a, a big loss last week. But I think it's it, it it's definitely a Sharkies win. Yeah, look. The Sharkies, although when you look at them on the ladder, you go, oh, look, it's, you know, life's pretty good. We're currently sitting fifth. But I think that when you actually watch them play, it's time now. It has to get, come together now. You, you can't mm. wait for the finals or you can't wait for, you know, round 25 or 26 to go, all right, we're going to start making it work now. Yep. There has to be a base of a game 
a type of player or type of team that you are. Um, mm. I spoke about it earlier on the week. I do think that that left side for the Sharkies has been a real concern for a while now. And I think that, you know, it might be a bit too soon, uh, but I'd rather do it sooner than later. I, I do think they need to consider maybe bringing Trindle in at, uh, to defend at six over Moisa. Uh, I'd love yep. Moisa's turnaround, but, you know, that left side for the Sharkies has just really struggled. And if you bring in, if you bring in Trindle now, you go, mate, you've got two to three weeks. You can mm-hmm. see how it goes. If it doesn't work, you can always bring Matty Moylan back in. And, and at least you know that when you do click with Matty Moylan, you can take it to the big boys. Um, yep. Whereas if you leave that switch too late, it, you may leave Trindle with not enough time to, to settle into that spot. Uh, but the Sharkies, it, it has to begin coming together soon because they're just so up and down at the moment. It is just so hard to pick as to what's gonna, what Sharkies team is going to turn up. Yep. Uh, in regards to the Doggies, I've... I've been really glass half full with them this year and the fact that they've got a young side, a young coach, mm-hmm. and, you know, there's so much excitement for the future. Last week was probably the first time where I was really disappointed with their performance. And if I'm the yep. Bulldogs as a coach, it's all of I mean, look, if both coaches, all my focus would be on would be defense. I don't care about attack. I don't care how many points we score. All I yep. care about is how much we don't let in. And I think that yep. the Bulldogs, that's all attitude. 